you. Hi, I'm Patty. I am, is it too loud? <laughs> it's really loud. I'm Patty. I'm a daughter, sister, wife, lawyer, community activist, volunteer, mother, and friend. I have, I've had many roles just like all of you. And I learned one thing in those roles, that I have superpowers. And so do each of you. I can build buildings and schools. I can feed families. I can educate a child. I can save lives. I can find a cure for diseases. And so can each of you. I know that each of you has done something in many of those areas yourselves. And those are heroic acts. Therein lie your superpowers. Uh, I have been fortunate um, because I think I get my superpowers through my DNA. Uh, my grandmother, Dora, I called her Nana, was a, an early feminist in the 1920s and 30s. And I can just imagine her going to the voting booth in 1920 when women first had the right to vote, probably with my two-year-old mother in hand as she went to that, that voting booth. And I know that she felt pride and gratitude and excitement and hope for the future for her, ch her two-year-old child, my mother, and patriotism and just excitement that she could be doing this at that time. And I feel that those same things running through my veins and those same, the same patriotism and the same excitement about the opportunities that we have as women. And Next, I have the genetic link to my mother, and my mother was my greatest, my greatest inspiration. She was a champion for education, and when I walked across the stage to get my high school diploma, my mom was there to hand it to me and give me a hug. I don't know if I was more proud of her or she was proud of me, but it, it was quite inspirational to have her there for me. She, she was there because she was a school board member and had decided to become involved in the 1960s, uh, she went to Rochester, Minnesota to learn about a program that they had there to teach, to teach teachers how to teach children to read. Dyslexia was a new disability, and my brother had dyslexia. And so my mom decided to go to learn about this program and see what she could do to help him. So she, she went and she, she, she learned about the program, brought it back to our community, taught many tutors and teachers about, about the, what could be done, and then decided it wasn't enough. And she used her superpowers to, to run for the school board and to make a difference and to inject that, that learning into the curriculum so that thousands of other kids could be affected and helped to learn to read. So I am very proud of her. I'm grateful for her, her legacy and her example for me. And now the genetic link has continued. And our daughter Avery, who's now a junior in high school, is, she's 17 years old and she's working to combat bullying and peer aggression. And she's working to fight for those uh, in Nepal that are being subjected to the sexual slave trade. And I'm just so proud of her and grateful. I'm grateful that she understands that she has superpowers that she needs to use and reach out and make a difference to others in our community and to make our world different. I know all of you have those same things and are using them as well. I'm fortunate because of my education and business practice to have been able to be involved in many different things from business to health care to children and families to almost everything in between. It's, it's been a great journey. And I've been able to add my superpowers to the mix. But my superpowers are only one part and one piece of the puzzle that is our community. And that's what I've really learned. I have a good example, and it relates to um, our son Taylor. When he was six years old, he came home and after school. And I said, how's your day? And, and what, what do you think your job is at school? I was just interested. And he said, oh, well, to, without skipping a beat, he said, to help the teacher keep the other kids in control so that she can teach. <laughs> I, I was dumbfounded. And of course, like any mother, expected to hear something like, be good enough to have extended recess or 
uh, read more Dr. Seuss books or something like that. And so what I heard him saying was that the teachers were overwhelmed and that they needed help and they needed support. So I did what any parent would do after hearing that. And the next morning I got up and went to the school and joined the PTO. Now my PTO journey was not the stereotypical PTO journey because it went from asking my son that question and getting that totally shocking answer uh, to, to uh, being able to co-chair a $250 million bond issue, which was a great, wonderful thing to get to do in my life. Of course, in between, in the 15 years, there were a myriad of, of fun nights and talent shows and wrapping paper sales that, that ad infinitum that continued on and on. But I also learned a lot of things I didn't expect to learn. I learned about site selection and school boundaries and geothermal ground coupled heat pumps. But it was, it was wonderful to get to, to work with so many people because the other parents and administrators and teachers who were working with us, when we gathered together, we saw some major needs those first years that my kids were in school. And one of the needs we saw was that teachers in their school were working in classrooms that were over 100 degrees every day in, the, in early August. And teachers were unable to teach to their potential, and the students were unable to pay attention and focus and learn to their potential. And by comparison, the kids at the schools across town who were in air-conditioned schools were learning at rocket speed. So we decided it was time to do something, to do something about that. And so there was a lot of work by a lot of different people bringing their superpowers together because with something so major, you, you can't do it by yourself. It's not just one superpower. It's, it's our whole community superpowers gathered together. And the excitement and the joy and the, and the success of that effort was because we were unified in our goal for all kids to, to improve the lives of all the kids across this, across this community. And it was the merger of the superpowers that, that allowed this to go so well. I, I was able to bring my enthusiasm and my determination to get things done. Some would call it bullheadedness. Uh, but uh, I was also able to uh, tap the superpowers from my friends. And I have one more secret, and that is superpowers are like, they're like gifts. They're gifts like love. It, the more you use them and share them, they grow and they expand and they they help our community. So I learned that fact from my generous, civic-minded friends. So I want to introduce, introduce you to my fab four, my superpower friends. First is Beatty, the humanitarian. Beatty gave me the superpower of the jaws of dogged determination, balanced by her outrageous humor, which s helps to soften the tenacious grip. And then there is Susan, the organizer, she gave me the superpower of invincibility and the relentless persistence of not giving up, of determining that no is not an answer that you can accept. You keep finding another way to do it. And then there's Kathy, the collaborator. Kathy had the x-ray vision and has the x-ray vision of shared leadership and collaboration. She understands the power of multiple voices and making a difference through consensus. And then there's Susan, the visionary. V Susan gave me the cape of levitation, which helps me to rise above the fray and to focus on the end, helping to serve our community in a wider public forum. So I have learned from all of these <coughs> fabulous friends. They have given me superpowers, and many of you here today have also given me powers. We all feed off of each other. And granted, not all PTO memberships lead to a bond issue that, that touches every doorstep and, and affects 24 schools around the community. But I would argue that the potential is there in any project that you undertake. And if you don't step up and say yes and make the effort, then the status quo will remain and nothing will change. So I, I hope that you will do so. I learned from community involvement that 
It includes every race, every religion, and every culture. Sometimes that makes it hard because hearing different perspectives is always hard and causes causes angst at times because you have your own opinion and it's, it's hard to move off and go, oh, okay, that idea is good as well. So, but the end result is always better with more voices. It's always stronger. It's always more inclusive. So even though it's uncomfortable, it's important to collaborate and communicate and have a consensus towards the ultimate good for all. There are treasure troves of people in our community and across this nation that are working in a myriad of ways, often thanklessly, anonymously, tirelessly, and using their superpowers and making a big difference in our allowing our communities to sparkle and thrive. So whether it's buying a care package for a family in need or empathizing with the struggles of a, that you hear in a teacher's voice or understanding the stigma of a family in front of you in the grocery line who is needing to use food stamps. The culmination of all of those, the, the empathy that you can have and the feelings that you can have for people and the steps that you can take to make a difference in kindness and reaching out and making the effort, that is monumental and it can change lives. Every single act transcends the simplicity of the act itself. Every act is supercharged, it's magnified, the seed, you can plant seeds and may not see the results for years. You all know that. But it's in the act itself that ultimately the seeds will sprout, germinate, and their beauty and power will reveal themselves. So my mom had absolutely no idea when she, what she was getting into. All she knew was she wanted to do something to help my brother learn to read. So don't be frozen into inaction on the fear that you can't do everything, or the guilt that you can't do more. E everyone has superpowers. Everyone has a gift to give, be it time, talent, or treasure. Don't forget, the arm is not diminished because it cannot walk, and the leg is not ridiculed because it cannot see. Each, each person can do something, and the cumulative effect is miraculous. There lie all of our superpowers. You know, in our community, we're fortunate. We're in top 10 of a lot of different things, and they keep, they keep telling us this. And in jobs and raising families and, and uh, a place for seniors to retire and college graduate satisfaction. But I say to you that each of you has superpowers within you. And with your superpower, and if you merge it with the person next to you or with your friends, and we all work together, I say that we could be top and in, in the top 10 of citizens, of citizens fed and children with homes, compassionate senior care, and quality jobs that befit our quality workforce, and equity and civility to all people. So be inspired by those around you today. Be inspired by those who came before you. I see that cape on the back of your chair. Grab it, step up act and say yes when asked and then soar. The world needs our superpowers, so come be a superhero with me. Thank you.